Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. Today I'll be checking out the Dangerous Gen X's first. Um, Gen X's, that should be between um, those who, that were born between, I think in the 1960s to maybe 1980s. I'm not really sure. I think I'm right. Um, what, what danger did they really face during that period? And I would assume this is about the US, obviously. Um, was it? I think that was the crack cocaine era, right? In the US, what else? What else happened during that? During that period, there were lots of serial killers in the US. Uh, I think that is like the golden age of serial killers. What else? What else? What else? Uh, I mean, to me, okay, I know they started really counting this thing from the baby boomers. I think that, I think that was when they released really, because I, I wanted to say that those that had to fight during World War II and World War I and all those ones actually had tougher lives, in my opinion. But I guess they really started um, counting this or started, you know, grouping this from the points of the baby boomers so i guess maybe if you want to look at it that way the baby boomers got to enjoy the prosperity that happened just up just after the war then then i think they gave birth i think they were the ones that gave birth to the gen x's yeah well anyway let's see how it is i personally i'm a, I'm a millennial i know that that doesn't uh we're not really popular anymore these days. Like most of the time, I don't even really hear. But the time, every time we used to hear about millennials, millennials, millennials all the time. But these days, I don't really hear people talk about millennials. Everything now is about Gen Z, Gen Zs, Gen Zs, which is understandable. The Gen Zs are they're so noisy. They talk too much. They too much drama with the Gen Zs these days. So, uh, uh, I guess, I guess uh, we are not significant anymore. Thank God. Anyway, let's get right into the video. If you grew up as Generation X, then it's probably a miracle you even survived. Really? At least that's what the modern world tells us. Many of the things that were normal back then are now taboo. In this video, we will have a look back and wonder how Gen X kids even survived. Television wasn't everything, but it was still pretty important. If you were a kid in the 70s, then you probably did not even have cable. Most people relied on a television antenna, which was usually rabbit ears and tin foil. However, there were some households that used an antenna that was mounted on top of the roof. Every so often, this antenna would need to be adjusted thanks to some wind or weather. This became a family affair. Really? This thing? <laughs> so the Gen, well, Gen Xs went through this. In my country, millennials went through this. <laughs> we had antennas of, uh, as well. We also had this, you know, like um, sometimes you have to go and go outside and turn it, you know, go outside and do all these things. If if it's not going well, maybe the wind is blowing too much. You just have to maybe try. Like actually, I guess your your Gen X's are our millennials. In I, I guess that's what it means because you know obviously. My country is not on the same level with the United States when it comes to development and industrialization, obviously. So, Gen X's went through what uh, what what Gen X's went through is what millennials went through in my country, if I if, if I would say. So, okay, I've 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 faced a lot. I have faced a lot. Yeah, I've, I've faced a lot. Yeah, you guys have to, you know, pamper me a bit. I have faced a lot. Seriously, if the gen if the Gen X's faced so much. Uh, shit. I also felt so much shit as a millennial in my country. Dad, of course, was in charge of the picture, so he was right in front of the television. One of the kids would be up on top of the roof and ready to receive instructions from the relay of the rest of the family spread out from Dad. No one ever thought anything about kids being on the roof and then falling off. Most kids got up there anyways just to get a better view of the neighborhood or the stars. Many newer roofs are much more steep, and that might be considered child abuse to send your kid up there. <laughs> I guess it's a good thing that people don't have to deal with antennas on the roof. Summers as a kid were always fun, and why wouldn't it be? You were out of school, and that meant you could spend more time with your friends. But with all that running around outside, you were bound to get thirsty. There's nothing quicker and more refreshing than a sip from the garden hose. Of course, you had to let it run a while before it got cool enough to drink, but it certainly had a distinctive taste. When is the last time that you've seen a kid do this? It's supposed to be unhealthy, yet here we are. <laughs> but occasionally, I still take a sip from the garden hose. 
<laughs> the garden hose was also connected to a couple other activities that parents today may consider them to be too dangerous. The first one was the slip and slide. The older editions of the slip and slide were a little bit more dangerous, and some kids broke bones or chipped teeth on these, but just about everyone slid off the end or over the side and got a grass or rock burn. Believe it or not, they still sell these, but they are a little bit safer. This next item, however, I'm not so sure about. As kids, we all enjoyed playing in the water sprinkler, but some of these sprinklers could be pretty rough. This one in particular was really dangerous. It had a solid steel base that could certainly hurt if you stubbed a toe on it or fell on it, but that wasn't the dangerous part. When the water ran through the sprinkler, it would move the metal fan blade at the top. At that point, it was like a little saw blade that was spinning fast on top, and it could cut through little water-soaked toes and feet. Kids were fast learners, though. If they got cut once, they would be sure to clear it the next time. Hmm. Kids in our day used to be outside a lot, and we loved it. That worked out great because most of our parents really didn't want us inside the house. Yeah, we used to play this when I was young as well. So, I, your version of Gen X is my country's version of millennials, definitely. Anyways, as a result, kids spent a lot of time. It worked out great because most of our parents really didn't want us inside the house anyways. <laughs> as a result, kids spent a lot of time out in the sun. And sunblock? We had no idea what that was. Are you talking about a hat or a shade tree? <laughs> At most, we may have depended on SPF 4, and that's only if we were super cautious. Everyone was exposed to the sun, and many of us would compare sunburns at the end of the day. When our skin started peeling, we would see who could peel off the biggest flake. Oh Woo! look, that one looks like Texas. <laughs> it also wasn't uncommon to see teen girls and young women laying out and trying to get that golden beach tan. Quite often, they would speed up this process by using either coconut oil or tanning oil. Today, most kids get lathered up with anything from 30 SPF to 100 SPF. Parents in those days certainly didn't have to watch us like the parents do today. They not only trusted us, but they also trusted our friends and the rest of the community. Parents realized that we needed to do things on our own, and that was how we were going to learn. However, if they were watching and we happened to get hurt, there was no doubt that they were going to be laughing as long as it wasn't life-threatening. <laughs> Bikes were everything to a Gen X kid, and they provided us a freedom that we couldn't get from anything else. We could go on adventures that were hours away from home, and for the most part, our parents had no idea where we were at. We also... That is actually scary, though, thinking about it. I mean, little kids like this riding bikes <sighs> with so many bad people in the world. You can't, you don't really know, you know, what someone could do to your child. So I do understand, yeah, at this time, at this, at this time in America, this was fine, but I don't understand now it's a bit so, too scary to leave your kids to just be out there like that. I mean, and I'm not saying there was no crime during, there was probably even more crime during this period, but I just, I just don't know. I just think the U.S. just had a different feel to it, like it could allow it. Now, what I see online, when, when, when I see, I know it's just online stuff, so maybe I'm, I'm being um, misled. I don't know, but if I were in the U.S. currently, I wouldn't also allow my kids to be playing outside like that. So, in the modern world, generally, the modern world, or maybe I'd also just think we are just a bit more pampered now. So. Due to that, as due, due to that, we feel like we have to protect our kids a bit too much now. You get what I'm saying? When during a period where there was always a threat of war, a threat of this, a threat of that, little things like have, letting your kids go outside and have a blast wasn't really that big of a deal compared to now that we are in peaceful time. So we are just things are just a bit too things are just a bit too peaceful. Let me put it like that. So. We have to look for other things to to protect. But when, if it was in a, 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 a country where there's a threat of war, threat of, you know, violence all the time, uh, you would have not been thinking, thinking like, I mean, let that kid, that kid needs to go so that he can be tough. You know what I'm saying? So I don't really know why it has changed like that. Because I'm just, I, I think the U.S. was still crime, there was still high rates of crime during this period. So I don't really know whether, why it's, 
it was okay for parents to allow this at that time, but now the parents are so scared of allowing it now. We used our bikes to jump some pretty shady ramps. We could do a lot with some plywood and bricks, and it was hours of entertainment. As we look back on our childhoods and compare it to modern kids, it's hard to believe that we did all those bike adventures with no helmet or knee pads. This picture pretty well sums up the generation. This kid is jumping his bike off of a super tall ramp. Notice that he has no helmet, knee pads, or elbow pads. Damn. Just pure fun adventure. If and this evil can like land dad. short, then the kid on the end is in trouble. Yeah. Occasionally, that did happen. Damn. As you look at the kids on the side, you can tell that they are... Look at this. The ones on the ground are probably guys, boys, and the girls are, like, watching. Good old gender roles there. <laughs> Then worried he, about this because they've the seen it happen that, themselves. But the best part about this photo the is there's a dad sitting on the yeah. front steps and he's smoking a cigarette while he's <laughs> waiting to see who gets hurt first. Wow. <laughs> For him, this is as good as any gong show on television. Back in those days, cigarette smoke was everywhere and you couldn't avoid secondhand smoke if you wanted to. In fact, most of us had at least one parent that smoked. Parents would send their kids into convenience stores to purchase cigarettes while they <laughs> waited out in the car. Usually the clerk would just look out and get a nod from the parent, which would signal that it was okay to buy the cigarettes. If the parents were not around, then the kid probably needed a note from the parents saying that it was okay to buy the cigarettes. These notes were never all that official, and it <laughs> might be written on a notepad, scratch of paper, or the back. It can even be written by the kids themselves. Fudges like that parents wrote it. Back of a receipt. Dear clerk, please sell Rhett a carton of cigarettes. Thanks, mom. <laughs> Can you believe that actually worked? I'm telling you. There's no chance that kids could ever do that today. <laughs> Car safety was something else that most people didn't take too seriously. In the U.S., it became mandatory that every car manufactured after 1968 had to have seat belts installed in them. But wearing them was more of a recommendation rather than a requirement until the mid-1980s. Until then, we stood up on the front seat so that we could see up over the dash, and our dad's arm was our seatbelt and the airbag. Another thing that we would do is lay up on the back dash and pick our noses Damn. as we looked at the cop car behind us. We thought it was super fun when dad had a slam on the brakes and we came flying out of that back window <laughs> and slammed into the back of the front seat. Back then, we had to learn how to take a fall, and the crazy thing about it is we couldn't wait to get back up there and try it again. That was fun. That sounds Pickup fun. Pickup trucks were not as common as what you see today, and people that had boats would haul them with regular cars, even Cadillacs. And when Dad needed lumber, it was going on the roof of the car so that it could come home. He would tie it down a little, but it was still our job to help hold the lumber down as it was stacked on the roof. So there we were, standing up on the seat, halfway out the window, clinging to the lumber on top, while Dad had his hand on our waistband to keep us from falling out. Somehow his other hand was busy holding down the lumber on his side, which is pretty incredible to think about. At the same time, he was also steering the car, shifting gears, and smoking a cigarette. What the hell? It's no wonder what? that we thought he could do anything. Yeah, 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 yeah. Remember some of the other activities we did? We all had toys that are considered dangerous now, but back then it was completely normal. Lawn darts was one of those toys. That weighted sharp point could penetrate anything if you didn't get the heck out of the way. Clackers, click clacks, or knockers had the possibility of shattering and sending shards of plastic flying through the air like shrapnel. Yet somehow, some of these clackers survived. In fact, here is my pair from the 70s. <laughs> Back then, we learned how to entertain ourselves with the simplest of things. Do you remember making long chains from soda and beer can pull tabs? According to what they say today, we could have been badly cut at any moment, yet most of us had minor cuts, if any. But one dangerous activity that we all did was kite fighting. Remember this one? You would fasten razor blades to the side of your kite and then swoop it down so that you could cut the string of your friend's kite. 
If you were successful, then that kite would keep flying forever. But if your kite took a nosedive to the ground, then you better be quick and get out of the way of those razor blades. BB guns were another item that was quite common. Kids could go all over town with one on the front of their handlebars, and the BB wars would certainly get intense. Back then, we definitely did not have safety at the top of our list when those <laughs> broke out. Firecrackers were certainly a lot more accessible than they are today. It seemed like you could pop them off in every city and it was perfectly legal. Did you ever set off some fireworks and then place them into your Tonka truck and roll it into the driveway where some neighborhood girls were playing jacks so that you could get their attention? No? Well, I guess that was just me then. <laughs> Speaking of jacks, they were definitely something painful to step on if you were barefoot. Any parent today that complains about a Lego being stepped on has probably never really stepped on a Jax. These things would completely hide in the shag carpet and they were like little soldiers that were waiting to ambush you. With all that time that you spent on the bicycle, then I'm sure that you probably came in contact with at least one of these. One slip of the foot and this pedal could travel up your leg like a vegetable peeler. Mm. Kids today know nothing about that level of pain. Wow. Here is something else that could be really painful. These chairs were really comfortable to lay in, but when you got up, you had lines going all across your skin. But that wasn't the worst part. They were not the easiest to adjust. You had to bend them all the way in so that you could adjust them further out. One wrong move and the hinges of these torture devices could snap down on you like a bear trap and take off a chunk of skin. Hmm. Are these chairs even sold today? <laughs> Despite all the dangers that were lurking all around us, it really was a special time to grow up in. People were friendly and neighbors were someone that you could count on. Yeah. Some of the dangers that we see today are completely different than what we faced. Do you have any special memories that you would like to share? Let us wow. know in the nice comments video. below. Nice video. Nice As video. As always, thank you so much. Wow, that was a great video, man. That was a really, really great video. And like you said towards the end there, um, like I think that was what I was trying to say, but I, I just couldn't um, put it in the right words. From what I'm seeing from the outside looking, there is no um, community. There is no communal. Uh, thing going on in the US, right? Everything is kind of independent. Everybody is like independent. There's this independent culture, you know, there's no community. And I'm not saying it's only in the US, it's everywhere now. Like, I think the world now is, has gone to shit. Like, everybody's just, you know, individualistic. Everybody's just like, nobody's really thinking about the, the neighbor. Where I'm living right now, I, I barely know anybody that, that is living in this neighborhood. I barely know anybody. And, uh, and I'm not going to sit down here and, and ask like I'm I'm not part of the problem. I'm, I'm also part of the problem. I think there's just something going on in the air, in the world currently that's just making us to be very individualistic. That we don't, we don't really care about our neighbor. We don't really care about like someone could be dying in the next house. We don't even know. We don't even care. Like, and it's, it's something, and naturally I'm kind of a nihilistic kind of person, you know, in the, in the, in the way I, I view the world. And some part of me feels like the world is getting worse as 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 time time is going. The world is getting worse, even though we don't even have that many wars compared to how human beings is to fight. But I just feel like there's just this lack of care, lack of love for each other. The way it used to happen in the past, even though people used to fight, kill each other, but there was always this communal thing going on that it just can't. It just it just, just doesn't exist these days. And, and it's not just in the West, it's everywhere now. You know, it's everywhere. So I don't know what's going on in the air. Maybe it's global warming or whatever. I don't really know what's going on. But there's just something happening in the world right now that just people just don't really like each other like that. So some part of me just feels like you just live the best life that you can live and hope for the best for your children. That's just all you can hope for. Anyway, let me know what you guys think down in the comments. What 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 are you what part are you in Gen Z Millennial whatever Let me know down in the comments Tell me what challenging that you that you that you faced in your childhood And um, I would like to I will reply to all of you guys It's gonna be fun I really appreciate it Thank you guys for watching I'll see you on the next one Peace.